Well, I'm so excited about this next interview. And our cities are definitely in need of revival, but where do we begin and what can we do? Dave Donaldson is the co-founder of CityServe International, as well as Convoy of Hope. And in his new book, by the same name, he inspires and equips the body of Christ to compassionately meet the needs of our local cities more effectively. Dave, welcome to Real Life. Uh, my joy. Great, Great to be back. Great to have you. And I tell you what, God is doing some mighty things. And it's been a little while since you've been here. And I wanted to know if you could take a moment and just share uh, about your story, because your story has a lot to do with how God brought your ministry into existence. So share with us about your story today. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, Jay, it was uh, in 1969, uh, my parents were pastoring in Northern California and one hot summer evening as they took off, uh, little did we know, you know, what was going to happen, uh, but a drunk driver slid across the divide and hit their car head on. Uh, our dad was killed instantly. Wow. Uh, mother survived, which was, that's an amazing story in itself. She was literally thrown out of the car and there was a fire engine that just happened to be passing by. Otherwise, she would have died too. And uh, I remember uh, days following when my two brothers went to visit her at the hospital and we peered through the glass into her room and she was so beaten up and broken, we didn't even recognize her. Wow. And so there we were, uh, three uh, young boys and a younger sister. Uh, wondering what would happen next, where would we get food, clothing, and who's going to take in four young kids. And Jay, almost every night, uh, Christian brothers and sisters brought us hot meals. Wow. And incredible. Wow. And then, uh, you know, the big question, you know, was who's going to take in four kids. Yeah. And this sure. family, uh, they didn't have much, uh, but they had big hearts. And they uh, invited us into their single wide trailer. And I believe we have a photo of that trailer. Okay. Wow. If we could put that up there. And, and I recall walking up to that trailer and I was scared. You sure. know, and I, I wondered, would this be another stop along the way? Would they really want us and keep us? And as we walked inside, uh, Mr. Davis was standing there and he had this warm, inviting smile on his face. And this is what he said. He said, you are with family and this is your home. Wow. That four letter word changed our lives and literally became the impetus for starting Convoy of Hope and now City Serve. Because Jay, you know, it meant that they were willing to not only share their space, but they're willing to share our sorrow, our pain, our anger. Wow. And to invite that into their home. Yeah. And, and that's what compassion means. It literally mm. means to suffer with. Mm. Wow, wow. And there was 10 people in that? Uh, actually 11. 11 you know, people. Because when my uh, mother uh, was well enough, uh, they set up a hospital bed in the living room. And uh, Mrs. Davis, Levada Davis, mm -hmm. she had a, this regiment. And I'll tell you what, if you, uh, if, you, if you didn't use the restroom when it was your time, then you had to wait till you got to school. Uh, so uh, tough love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's amazing how God takes our misery and produces a ministry in our lives. And uh, how did God use what you went through to bring about Convoy of Hope and City Serve? Well, the Lord, you know, never wastes anything. That's right. And we, he, he's all always wanting to turn the wounded into wounded healers. Mm. And he turned our dad's mangled car into a fleet of Convoy of Hope trucks. Wow. That now have helped over a hundred million people uh, in America and around the globe. And we wanted to help others as we were helped. And it wasn't just a disaster response uh, but also helping the local church reach out to families. You know, one story I have not shared uh, on the air here, uh, but I was speaking at Habitat for Humanity, and I told them before Habitat was, we were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, because our dad had this major fixer-upper. It, it wasn't livable uh, when he died. And one Saturday, they brought us to that house, and the community was crawling over that house like one big ant hill, and turning that home into lifestyles of the rich and famous. Wow. 
And Jay, that was a turning point for me because okay. I stood on that front lawn area and instead of becoming angry at God, I said, God, I want to be like those people. Wow. That was a turning point. And, wow. and really that became for me uh, the, the impetus uh, for Convoy of Hope, working with our government uh, around the world, uh, Israel, and now City Serve. Yeah, because you, you're actually talking about in this book on how we can uh, collaborate with the government. And it can be done because you're actually doing it. So tell us a little bit more about City Serve and what's happening in your ministry right now. Well, if I can mention, uh, I think a great example of that. Please. Uh, years ago, I worked closely with uh, the White House uh, tied to the Faith Base and Community Initiative, which was the government throwing out a welcome mat uh, to the church to partner uh, for bringing solutions to the brokenness in our communities. And I was asked by Health and Human Services to host uh, the first ever summit on foster care and adoption. Wow. And I was up on the stage uh, waiting to introduce the uh, Secretary for Health and Human Services and I'm hearing the stories of these kids and, and their plight and how so many of them felt like a discarded piece of trash. And wow. so I went home and I asked my wife, uh, what do you think about us becoming foster parents? And my wife is one of the most compassionate, loving people on this planet. And she replied, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, our lives are already filled. Right, right. And, and so, uh, but we prayed. Yeah. And the Lord told us this. Wow. I know your lives are filled. You have no more room. But we want you to make room. Come on. We want you to make yeah. room. Because, Jay, if God can get it through you, he'll give it to you. Come on, come on. If God can get it through you, he'll give it word. to you. And uh, I know we're running out of time or, until our next segment, but we ended up uh, getting our certification. And uh, this young lady, 16 years of age, uh, showed up at our door. And I kid you not, her foster parent dropped her off in her box of all her belongings like he was dropping off a FedEx package. He said, good luck. No wow. hug, nothing. Wow. And, and so she was walking up to our home and uh, bent over like a bruised flower. She was holding her pillow with one hand. And, and, and as she approached the door, I swung the door open and I gave her a, a warm, inviting smile like Bill Davis yeah. gave to us 40 right. years earlier. Wow. She walked in, we gave her hugs, wow. and I whispered in her ear, Barbara, you are with family wow. and this is your home. Wow. And that's what compassion, wow. the Come compassion on. of Jesus does. Yeah. If we will make room, he just keeps on multiplying mm. it to change our world. Wow. Yep. So what's happening in her life now? She just had a big <laughs> event, right? Well, I'm so glad you asked that because uh, we're celebrating uh, because just uh, a little over a week ago, she married a wonderful young man. Wow. And we have a photo uh, of Beautiful. that uh, wedding. And if we can put that up on the screen. Yeah, they're up there here. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. Very nice. Beautiful. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, to see this, it, it moves me because the first time we met her, yeah. she was sitting on the couch and she was so bruised, neglected. She was like this. And to go from that to now this, this beautiful young lady who is not only getting married, but they have they have declared that uh, they're going to become foster parents. Really? Yeah. So now it's three generations <laughs> in now. At least. Wow. Yeah. That is so awesome because, you know, it's amazing how, how important it is that even in your situation that you can open up your home and give to somebody that the Christian values, the love of Christ, someone that comes, like you said, completely battered and broken and now see her at the point where she wants to get married and then also want to do ministry on top of that is just really awesome to see that. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really excited because, you know, this is a powerful thing. So we're going we're gonna to have more time in a minute. But real quickly, how important is it for churches to network with um, the government? And you're seeing a lot of rapid growth in yes. churches as they're doing it. Why do you think that is? Uh, as a nonprofit leader uh, directing Operation Blessing, first for the 700 Club and then Convoy of Hope and now City Serve. The, the tragedy is this, that too many churches are outsourcing their compassion to national nonprofits like ours, yeah. and, or they're sponsoring a child, which is wonderful, 
but it's like they're checking that compassion box instead of recognizing the brokenness in their own community. Their own community. And in yeah. learning, learning about the models that are out there and ways that they can serve their community and literally lead, yeah. lead, be the epicenter of healing as it relates to partnering with government, uh, corporate, and other you know, nonprofits. Well, I want you to go a little bit deeper into that in a couple of moments. And we're gonna be back here for more with Dave.